The BVI celebrates H. Laverty Stout Day. Leader of the opposition embraces new government and a viral international dilemma called the Momo Challenge that is persuading our children to commit suicide. These and more stories when 284 News returns. When you need to stay connected with friends and families at home or abroad, the best choice for you is freedom. CCT Freedom. With the lowest rates in the market, our Freedom Plan gives you unlimited calls and texting. Plus, our Freedom One package includes 10 gigabits of super fast unlimited LTE data and unlimited calls to the BVI, USA, USVI, Canada, Puerto Rico, and UK lines. Why pay for overages when you can enjoy CCT Freedom? Stop by at one of our stores today and speak with one of our representatives to find out more about our CCT Freedom packages. Welcome everybody. It's Friday, March 8, 2019, and I'm Javon Wilson with your 284 News. Now you might be wondering who hijacked my partner, Ron Grant, but be rest assured, he is safe and sound touring the world and of course making beautiful memories. No worries, Ron. This week, I'm going to hold it down for the both of us. Now topping our newscast, there is a new government in town and that is not all. Following the swearing-in ceremony, the BVI saw the ministerial portfolios being revised to match the strengths of our new government officers and most importantly, the most pertinent needs of this territory. Now let's begin with the Premier's office. Unlike the previous administration, the BVI Port Authority, the BVI Airport Authority, Climate Change Trust Fund and TRC, which of course is the Telecommunications Regulatory Commission, they all now fall under the leadership of the Premier's office. The agriculture and fisheries portfolio was removed from natural resources and labor and added to Dr. Natalia Shawande Wheatley's ministry, which is also responsible for education, culture, sports, and youth affairs. Mr. Wheatley was also sworn in as the deputy premier. Honorable Vincent Wheatley's Ministry of Natural Resources and Labor welcomed the addition of immigration as well, which was previously under the premier's watch. Now, in the previous administration, Her Majesty's prison fell under the supervision of education, but it has now been married to Honorable Malone's Ministry of Health and Communication. Last but not least, we see Junior Minister of Trade inheriting a new portfolio, sorry, Economic Development and Honorable Shari De Castro has been tasked with that responsibility. Now, all in all, this represents fresh perspective and the territory awaits effective management of all the ministries. Monday, March 4, 2019, saw a heartfelt wreath-laying ceremony to commemorate the life of a BVI legend who has truly revolutionized the territory through his political and personal contributions. The well-attended event also marked the first official appearance of the Premier and his ordained ministers, who respectively and, of course, empathetically recapped the life of a patriot, H. Laverty Stout, who paved the way for development through education. Take a look. The wreath is presented by Mrs. Brenda Lexington, and the premier is in motion to lay the first wreath. Mr. Stout, who was the first and longest serving chief minister in the BVI, was extremely fond of the quote from Proverbs 29, verses 18, which says, where there is no vision, the people perish, a phrase, of course, that he would recite frequently when arguing in favor of development projects. As the late Honorable Stout would say, it was quite an auspicious event. And it was quite indeed with the outpour of love and appreciation for a great man who believed in the prospects of this beautiful territory we all call home. The British Virgin Islands is now in an uproar with the introduction of the airport development fee, which increased from the initial amount of $20 to a massive $50. This decision was solidified by the predecessor government, the National Democratic Party, by way of the last cabinet meeting. The press release stated, effective Friday, March 1st, 2019, the fees listed in sections B and C hereunder will be enforced. Persons traveling on airlines that do not include the ADF fee in their ticket will be required to now pay the same at a departure 
tax boot prior to proceeding through security. For the TB Letham International Airport, the additional amount is $30. Of course, $15 inbound and $15 outbound. Virgin Garda and Anigadis Airport uh, fee will now be $20 each, and inter island or domestic travel will see a $5 fee being added. Now, many residents are duly concerned that this will deter persons from traveling through our main port and, you know, will serve as encouragement for persons to continue to use the gateway through St. Thomas for travels. Um, however, others have opined that it is prudent considering the physical state of the airport and the financial aid that will be required to repair and revamp the airport. Up next, Rotan comes alive with the Children's Book Parade. Leader of the opposition embraces the new government and Visar hosts their annual fundraiser. Stick and stay. You're watching 284 News. Get online today with CCT Go Fast LTE. Simply select from any one of our Go Fast LTE plan options. Each plan offers unlimited wireless residential internet and a price to suit your budget and required data speed. Stop by any one of our locations and speak with one of our representatives and get online with Go Fast LTE, the BVI's preferred choice for reliability, speed, and affordability. CCT Life Unlimited. Welcome back, everyone. You're watching 284 News. Rotown came alive with the beautiful faces and characters portrayed by our young children during the Early Childhood Education's annual book parade last Friday. It was remarkable. I mean, over 100 children dressed as their favorite book characters. We saw Santas, lions, elves, and even Llama Llama. I think the only thing we didn't see was uh, the super popular baby shark, but that's okay. Nevertheless, it was quite a monumental parade as we reminded the children of the fundamental importance of of reading. The parade, which began at the Noah Lloyd Park, saw participation from schools across the territory, including a contingency from the Brigado Flax Primary School, all the way from Virgin Garda. Now, once everyone arrived at the Queen Elizabeth II Park, a colorful, dynamic program was put on by the kids themselves, who recited poems, spoke about their favorite characters and stories, and even put on skits. Take a look. The annual Kids Book Parade is organized by the Ministry of Education through the Early Childhood Officer with the objective of getting the young population excited about the importance of reading. I must say kudos to all the children who participated, the parents and the teachers that aided along the way as well. Via a press conference hosted by the National Democratic Party, new leader of the opposition, Honorable Marlon A. Penn, is now ready to put all political grievances aside and work along with the new Virgin Islands Party government to ensure that the needs of the territory are effectively met. 284 Media reached out to Honorable Penn, who conceptualized his role going forward and the immediate areas of focus. Now, continuing on in the National Democratic Party, on Tuesday, March 5th, the territory was left in total disarray with the public disclose of Mark Vanderpool's resignation from the world of politics. Mr. Vanderpool stated that this is due to personal reasons and offered his apologies to the electorate of District 4, considering that his decision came on the heels of the recently concluded BVI elections, where he was actually able to secure 442 votes to retain the representative's seat for the four district. Now, with this new decision, the question of a by-election comes into play, which might be constitutionally due by May. However, this will be fully based on the governor's discretion. Now, in addition to that, former Minister of Education Myron V. Walwin also pledged to retain his role as the chairman of the NDP. Visor, which is a voluntary organization dedicated to providing 24 hours protection and saving lives at sea, held their annual fundraiser at the governor's house, this time dubbed the Governor's Gourmet Gathering. The outcome, spectacular. Scores of people standing in solidarity and support of a great cause. Now, 284 Media caught up with the operations manager who spoke on the values of Visor. Take a look. So this is one of our yearly fundraisers. We have an operating budget of $250,000. Uh, the majority of our money comes from the charter company. We get $2 per um, charter guest. But as you know, the charter industry has been a little hit since the storm. So this fundraiser tonight is super important 
because we need to make sure that we get our um, budget up to what it should be, even though, um, you know, the people still aren't here as they used to be, right. but we're still just as busy. The event was an amalgam of delicious food, good drinks, and a great vibe, all in all, in support of raising the necessary needed funds for such a vital organization. Now, Governor Jasper, who acted as patron and host, was super delighted to be a part of the fundraiser and had this to say. Well, Visa is pretty much voluntary funded. So it's it's down to the volunteers, both the crews who at a minute's notice will jump on a boat to go and save someone, the coordinators behind the scenes who link them up. Uh, every time you turn on channel 16, that's Visa who are keeping you safe and listening and monitoring. So it's an organization built on community support and community spirit. So when it comes to that wider community spirit, actually it needs people to, to keep that going, to put their hands in their pockets, to fund it, to keep it supported and thriving in the years to come. The event was welcomed by the business community with many sponsors coming on board, including our very own, of course, 284 Media and CCT. The other sponsors included RTW, The Bitter and Yacht Club, and Speedies, among many others. Guys, uh, stay tuned to our page for a full recap of the event. Up next, our international news and the weekend vibes with the infamous Ricky Ricky. Stick around, you're watching 284 News. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. Welcome back to 284 News. And on the international scene, the Momo Challenge, which the world once thought was a host, has turned out to be a real dilemma, a dangerous and viral game that is instructing children across the world to harm themselves, their pets, and even their family members. Now, if the children do not follow the rules, Momo then starts to threaten them. Momo sends bloody scary pictures of dead people, some even decapitated, and instructs the children to harm themselves or else they will kill the child's family. Now, police in Argentina are alleging that a 12-year-old girl may have committed suicide due to being influenced by the Momo video and have issued a warning to parents to supervise their children's online viewing content. It has now been reported in Mexico, Argentina, the United States, France, Germany, and now right here in the BVI. Take a look. What do you tell you? Talk to them so they could believe they don't want them to see me. Talk to them. Tell them what happened. I, I had seen on my mommy phone. Mm -hmm. And why he tell you? He told me to kill myself, but I didn't kill myself. Good girl. He tell you kill yourself? Yeah, but I didn't even kill myself. What, what, what else he tell you? Um, I don't know. I, I only know what, what, what the first thing he had said. Okay. All right. People, this thing is real. You know me, this thing is real. This is crazy, like, bye. Ooh, a wasp! I... Hello, I am Momo, your worst nightmare. I am gonna kill you. I will kill you. At night I'll come when you're in your bed, and in the morning you'll be dead. You want a surprise? Look in my eyes. I won't lie. You're going to die. Slice your leg and you'll never meet me. Slice your wrists and your parents will never see me. Sweet dreams, little one. Beware of me, Momo. You hate wasps! Shoot! You know, many persons are speculating that this might be some form of paranormal activity, um, but, you know, there are people who I believe are behind this. This is just a psychopath uh, simply trying to scare kids into harming themselves and others. And currently, the BVI, sorry, the FBI is working um, assiduously to find out who's behind it. Parents, teachers, guardians, you know, we are urging you to pay special attention to what your kids are viewing online, especially on YouTube. And even there, um, it has to be supervised uh, because these videos are now being disguised. For example, the video may start as a Peppa Pig episode and eventually switch to the Momo video a few seconds after. So it's also important that you supervise and observe them even through their favorite videos. Now, if you find your child is acting weird or scared, try your absolute best to reassure them that, first of all, this isn't real and that they should not give in to harming themselves.
And that's it for your international news. Up next, we've got Ricky bringing you the Weekend 411. Stick and stay. This is 284 News. Man, was a dance in the milk. My girl, that's it. Puppy dance, yo, Batman dance, yo. Yeah. Yeah, greetings to all the I. It is I, Ricky, with an I. And this is the weekend vibes. The man is practicing a little dance move and thinking of the car. It's a big holiday weekend. Yes, Monday is a holiday. Monday is come on Wednesday. So we don't have to come to work on Monday. And you don't have to go to work either. So it's going to be a super, super short weekend vibes. Why? Because. I only got one flyer, nobody else sent me anything other than Brent. And Brent is gonna be having the big Brent and Friends concert at Save the Seed Energy Center this Saturday. So people, everybody come up, bring your family, because performing alongside Brent will be people like Positive, Deanna Watley, Gabrielle Hoyt, Kendra Penn, Onique, Jessica Shipperton Schillingford, and Ishika Charles Downridge. Yeah, so it's gonna be a nice come out and Praise and, and, and good vibe kind of event. And I ain't about you, but I, I going to dash up. I tell you straight up, I am going. And I'm gonna tell you something about next weekend now. Not this weekend again, but next weekend. This is just a preview because Ultra Promotions is having the Ultra Flag Fest. So they're bringing people like Noah Power. Keep the CM energy. You know that song there? Let it fall upon me, right, son? Yeah, yeah, good tune and them kind of thing. Then he, they also bring in Moto. You know the man who sing Moto de, Moto de, Moto de? They're bringing him. Nai from Dominica. I hope I said that right. Nai from Dominica is coming from um, WCK. We have DJ Mali and that. DJ Maz, Collision Banos are saying it. Akai and Babnal. And I heard, I said, I heard they are bringing a lady that can dance like her waistline was designed by the walk up gods. So if you see me this weekend, you can buy me a drink. Once it does not contain alcohol, because I'm not drinking any alcohol for the month of March, I call it. See, see the hashtag here? March against alcohol. Yes. So remember, you can send me your flyers and what's not at advertise at 284media.com. If I don't have it, I can't talk about it. I'm out. Until next week. Blessings. March against alcohol. Thank you. And that's it for your entertainment roundup and this week's news. Be sure to like us on Facebook at 284media and 284BVI on Instagram as well as Twitter. And of course, be sure to join us again next week, same day, same time, as we deliver honest and impartial news right here on 284 News. Happy Friday, everyone.